Has Aston Martin made McLaren and Alpine the laughing stock of Formula One? Have they ruined those teams' legacies? Are they falling behind completely? And has Aston Martin proven itself as a big team? Aston Martin came into this year telling us all that they came with the car that is going to compete. But they came in with the standard of they will compete with McLaren and Alpine. And I think Alpine was expecting to have a big jump on Mercedes and try and go for that third position. And McLaren was kind of giving us expectations to not have a really good start to its year. But I wouldn't say that's necessarily a valid thing to say for a Formula One team that should just continue to be growing. Aston Martin made the biggest jump. They completely blew every other car out of the water and they went from practically the worst car on the grid last year to the second best this year. The McLaren car in 2021 was a great car. They were able to compete on good days with Ferrari. Sometimes they were even just as fast as Mercedes and Red Bull. I mean, the one exception was really uh, Monza, but actually in races like Imola, Lando was very close to getting a pole position. In Sochi, he did get a pole position. While that was a crazy condition, he was able to keep the car in P1 for a very long period of time. It was a fast car, a very competitive car. In 2022, sure, it started off bad in Bahrain, but four or five races later in Imola, they got a podium. And now we go into this season with, essentially, they're pretty lucky to even have the points that they have. Lando was able to score in Australia, and I think he picked up a point in Baku. And that is essentially it. Oscar did have points also in Australia, but honestly due to luck with a lot of people crashing out. The McLaren team has been fortunate to have those points, but also very unfortunate in its first two races. But unfortunate or not, reliability is a part of Formula 1, and if your car isn't reliable, then that's also on the team. Miami was a race that McLaren will definitely want to forget, and probably the team that had the worst weekend on that race track. Alpine, on the other hand, is in kind of a different boat. They're a team that last year was making a step up. Looked like they were continuously making a step, out, step up throughout the year, but eventually kind of stabilized itself out. And now more than ever, they kind of look like a solid P5 really out of the constructor standings. But I could argue that even Haas is catching up to them. And on some days, McLaren is just as fast as that Alpine car. It's not a car that really raises eyebrows. You look at them, they're like, they can compete with the top four. Australia was an outlier due to its tires. And I genuinely believe if there was tire degradation a lot harder on that track, and if Gasly wasn't doing as good, good of a job as he was on that track and staying within that DRS, Alpine would have been a lot further behind. I mean, if we take the example of Ocon, Ocon was nowhere near catching those top teams and was a lot of time behind. The two teams, Alpine and McLaren, have both been vouching and talking to their fans and really Formula One in general that they have been trying to make it up this pecking order for a long time. They are teams that have been considered top teams in the past. I mean, if we look at McLaren's past, it's all of a legacy. It's an insanely accomplished team. We all know McLaren for its name and what it's been able to achieve in the sport. You look at Alpine, you really think of Renault. When Renault is... The car that was given to Fernando, who is now their real rival, Fernando in 05 and 06 was able to actually win with that Renault car. Now, they're really a shadow of their own selves and their continuous talk of going for race wins and being able to compete at the top has not really been reality and they have been stuck in that P4, 5, and 6 position for a very long period of time. Aston Martin has been able to have almost the same amount of podiums this year as Renault has had in the past eight years. It's like a one or two podium difference. And that is a pretty insane statistic considering Aston Martin has only been a team for three years. Sure, if we count Racing Point and Force India, but Lawrence Stroll bought the team in 2020. So they were Racing Point in 2020, 2021 they were Aston Martin, 2022 Aston Martin, 2023 Aston Martin. It's been about three and a half years that they've been that Aston Martin team. And what they've already been able to achieve, what the car they've really been able to give Fernando Alonso has already been better than what Alpine or really Renault in general has been able to achieve for the past seven or eight years in its sport, especially when it comes to podiums and its successful trip on the constructors. It has not been in that P1, 2, or 3. And Aston Martin is looking to finish the year in P2. 
So is this a failure to their legacy? Is it something that they can come back from? Honestly, I do believe that both teams can make a comeback. Both McLaren and Alpine. As disappointing as it is right now, I do feel like these top four teams right now are super ahead also to do with the other teams underperforming. Alpine says they're going on an aggressive run plan. They're going to be gaining a lot more time. But they are pretty far behind, I would say, from the top four teams. As much as it looks like they're kind of close, I really wouldn't say that. In any of these races, they weren't really able to overtake any of the top four teams. And sometimes they, self they find themselves in these fortunate positions due to an insane qualifying or the race just being a little bit difficult in the back for the top teams to really come back. Gasly has had, I think, the two really outlier performances in comparison to Alcon so far. He had the Australia performance, which sadly ended with a crash. And he had the performance in Miami, which was a very good performance considering the car, but still not really finishing in a great position. Now, when you look at McLaren, I would say the only real good performance they've had so far has been Lando Norris in Australia. It's been a very tricky year for them, and that car just looks like a diva to handle. And McLaren has been a diva really for its whole entire time being in the sport. It's a trick car to drive, and a lot of drivers complain about it when they're driving it. They have changed their technical director, which could help them definitely for the future, but they're still pretty vulnerable and they're going for a strategy that in the past didn't work. They essentially have like three different technical directors. So uh, it's going to be a tricky type of way to really make that team go up. And the coordination is going to have to be fantastic. And this type of actual coordination took Adrian Newey out of the team. So if anything, it should tell you something. The teams definitely need to improve. And I think they should scrap the whole 100 race plan to go for race wins and put all their efforts in getting a lot more new personnel, and Omar even claiming that he is the reason that they got Dan Follows and Eric Blandon, which I find absolutely hilarious that Omar is trying to defend himself in that way. You can tell that the Alpine, oh, that Alpine station is definitely seeming like there's some rumblings going from under, and Lauren Rossi is very not happy with the team, but I wouldn't blame him. As a boss, I wouldn't be happy either, but I don't think that's the right way to go about it. You don't blame your team principal into the public, make those statements. I think that's just a way of really hurting the team's morale and putting them in a worse position. They know they're not performing at their hottest. What McLaren's team boss is doing, Zach Brown, he's saying that they're doing better than, I guess most of the media is really portraying out to be, but let's be honest, this has not been a good year for McLaren. And this is not something that they should look at at all in any slight of way, a good start to the year. It's a very bad start to the year and it's nothing even comparison to their 2020 season or 2021. In 2020, they started the year with a podium. Lando Norris was excitingly on that podium. While it was a fortunate penalty that Hamilton had, he had to extract 1.7 seconds out of that car in the very last lap to actually even get anywhere onto that podium stage. What I'm trying to say is the team is regressing and so is Alpine. Both teams are kind of stagnant and they need to improve fully if they want to call themselves top teams. One of them even makes its own engines. It's pretty ridiculous and both teams really need to step it up. I would love to see so much more teams fighting at the top. And I think that we have a very fortunate future ahead of us with this cost cap era, making the teams go all a bunch closer. But Alpine and McLaren really do need to step it up and show why they are the legacies that they are. And can they actually compete with the Aston Martin team? Are they good enough? Let me know your thoughts down below. What do you guys think of these three teams? Really the teams that were fighting in the midfield for most of the time to now being separated completely. Let me know your thoughts down below. Please leave a like. You guys mean the world and peace.